Hey, my name is Yannick, I'm from a very small indie gaming studio in Cape Town, South Africa, called Indie Game. And essentially, uh, we're building indie games and we're working on our second title. And in this title, we deal with quite a bit of enemies. Whenever you're dealing with enemies in games that you're building, you'll very quickly realize that you need to get the enemy from his position to your position in order to kill you, right? And that's what this video is about. So, we're in Unity, and within here we've got our node tree. And this node tree is essentially just a bunch of different sprites um, and we connect them up together using this node controller script that we're going to build. This node controller script has a couple of cool things, um, including this little gizmo that allows us to draw lines between the different nodes. So if we go to this node controller, you'll see that it's got a list of nodes, which is the children nodes. If you think about a tree, you've got the, the main branch and then you've got little sub branches that go off that's what these nodes are uh, then we've got a color and a sprite renderer this is essentially just to have stuff visually displayed within the editor so that we can debug and then we've got these three values g h and f now this forms part of the a star algorithm strategy g is the distance between the current node and the start node h is what they call the heuristic value this is the distance between the current node and the end node and then f is just um, the sum of the two, G and H. If we go down, we see this on draw gizmo selected. This simply just loops through the nodes and then we draw the lines between the nodes. So if you're in the editor and you en enable this giz gizmos little thing here, it will actually display the lines just to make it easier for you to see how it works. Cool. Next big part, which is essentially the main part of this entire algorithm, is um, the path finding. And this is a little controller that we're going to build, and this is the thing that's going to calculate how to get from this section, which is the red, to the end, which is the green, in the most efficient way possible. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a list, sorry, we're going to create a start node, and then we're going to create an end node. And this is essentially telling the pathfinding algorithm where to start and what is the measure of success, essentially what is the end we want to reach. Then we're going to create two um, lists of node controllers and this is this one we're going to call the open list, which is all the active parts that it can actually iterate through to see where it can navigate next and then the closed list which is exactly the opposite which is essentially just a list of things uh, paths that's already treaded and known not to tread again in order to make it more efficient now what we're going to do is generally you won't want to create a, a routine a coroutine for this uh, if you want to read up on coroutine, there's brilliant information around it on um, Unity, but it's essentially just a loop. Um, you would normally want to run this in a for loop, but for debugging purposes, I'm going to do it in a coroutine so that I can set the time that it renders. Cool. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up this coroutine and we're going to call it the path find routine. Cool. And then we just do a simple while loop. I'll get back to this in a little while. And then we just need to yield return. Return new. I'm going to do a wait for seconds. Because what this does is I can say every second or so, go and find me the next node. And then I'm going to color in those nodes so that you can see how it looks visually. Cool, we're then in the start, we're going to set the path routine equals path routine here, and then we're going to do a start coroutine, and we're setting this as one of the member, uh, member variables here, yeah, just because we want to stop the routine later on. So the first thing we're going to do is in the open list, um, we're going to add the start node. Where are we now? Start up there. Fantastic. And then we're going to set the current node to the open list. First node. Fantastic. And while we're here, 
this while loop is going to execute while this open list actually has values. So the first thing we're going to do in this while loop is we're going to create a variable called shortest path. Shortest path equals open list. Uh, sorry, no, that's not right. Float dot yeah. We're going to do like the maximum value from the float because uh, we're going to set the shortest path as a maximum. Maximum. So anything that is lower than that, um, we're going to set as the shortest path. It's kind of like a, a cheaty way, but it's kind of nice. It works. I said cheaty, not hacky. So the next thing is we're going to calculate the distance between our current node and the node that, uh, so this current node we set here and um, the node that we're iterating through and we're going to measure the distance. So there's in vector 3 there's a school distance, um, what do you call it, function that we can use. Position and then the item position that we're looping through here. Transform. Uh, that's not right. Open list. There we go. Item dot transform dot position. Now this is going to return the distance between the two things. If the distance between these two objects are smaller than the shortest path, we know that it is our newest shortest path. So we're going to set that. Right. And then our current node equals item. So now item, this is our new smallest node. And we're going to carry on looping through all those elements in the open list. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove, uh, not remove at, remove our current node from the open list because we now are using it and we're going to add it to the closed list. Sweet. Uh, add current node, sorry, that's wrong. Fantastic. Um, what we're then going to do is we're going to do like a quick check. If current node equals our end node, then we're going to know that we've reached the end. At this point, actually, this is where a lot of the work sits, but we're also going to stop the coroutine. But here's where we have to traverse back and get shortest path. So we'll get back to this section because it gets interesting. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do uh, for each and we're going to do through all the children of the node in the openness. Remember I was talking about earlier in this node controller, we've got children. So now we're going to iterate through all its children. Dot nodes, fantastic. So if the close list, now we have to think about this, contains the child, we just want to have it ignore it. Uh, contains. The reason for this is we don't want to add something to the open list again that has already been iterated. Closed. Why are you not working? Then we're going to set and calculate those values that we were talking about in here for the children, G, H, and F. So G, like I said, is from current node to start. So what we're going to do is current node dot G. We're going to do a vector three distance again. And we're going to say current node dot transform dot position from child dot Transform dot position. Cool. Then what we're going to do? We're going to do child dot h equals vector three dot distance. We're going to do current node again. End node transform dot position cool 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to just add for f we're going to be adding child g plus child f uh, sorry child h and then we're going to loop through all the open nodes in the open list and then if the child element we have here equals the open node and the child dot g is bigger than open node it's g uh, then we're going to continue we're going to skip it else we're going to add this new item open list. Where is open node? Not open node. It is open node there. Cool. So now what we're going to do is if we play this thing, not much is going to happen really. Because we haven't, we're not updating these colors. So what we, what we want to do is as we're adding well actually as we're adding to the clo close list we're just going to update the color to black in order to see how that looks and yeah okay nothing's working Nothing is happening. Let's see what's going on here. Is the routine starting? Is the end node been set? Let's see. Ah, of course. In our pathfinder, we have to set the end node, the start node, and the end node, which is node 10. Let's see. Cool. So here now we're iterating through it and we're trying to figure out what is the most efficient path. So it stopped prematurely, there's no errors, unless our end node, ah, that was our end node. I need to find this one. Ah, it's end. Sneaky. There we go. Let's run that again. Cool. Fantastic. We've reached the end. Now, what we want to do is we need to now figure out what we want to color in just the most efficient path. Now we've got we've gotten to the end, but we still don't know what the most efficient path is. So the next thing we're going to do is we're essentially going to traverse that section, all the sections that we've built up. Um, and that's going to give us um, the shortest path and then we're going to do it here but before we do that we need to know what the parent was because uh, we only know what the children is so what we're going to do is we're going to write here if let's see um, actually just what we're going to do is we're going to say child dot hmm and now remember actually we have to set a variable here called parent public and we're gonna hide this from the inspector public node controller parent and this is what we're gonna be setting so we're gonna say child dot parent equals current node so that we know the current node that we're iterating for the children is the parent sweet now what we're gonna do here is once this ends, I'm just going to put a breakpoint here. I'm going to attach it to Unity, and I want to see what the end node is, and I want to see if the parents are being built up correctly. Okay, let's run. Iterating. Cool, we've reached the end. End node is in controller. Let's see, parent is node 10 which is 
Fine. Let's see. Parent no ten. Its parent is node 5, node 1, sorry, node 2, and start controller. Fantastic. So now all we have to do is we have to do a for loop. No, we're going to do a while in node dot parent does not equal null because then we've reached the start. And we're going to let's make the color what do you think color we can make red so I think that's 255 for red yeah I think that is correct and we're gonna say we're gonna do a for node equals end node uh, yes that's right we're going to say current node dot color, and we're going to say node equals end node dot parent, and we're going to just run this and see what happens. Okay. I think we've hit an infinite loop. Okay, so uh, we've got a node here. We are doing a loop until the node's parent does not equal null because we know that that is the start node. Um, we're setting the colors to red every time we have the shortest path node. Uh, we're setting the next node to the parent node, iterating backwards, like I said. And then when you reach the end, we're just gonna set that start node as well to red. And then we stop this routine. So now what's gonna happen is as soon as we run this, you'll see it's building up the tree. And then once it's reached the end, it iterates backwards. And the shortest path is in fact the middle path. So that uh, concludes the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this at all helpful, um, please press that like button even better. If you can do us a little subscribe, uh, that'll be amazing. Um, thank you so much and have a great day.